How's everybody doing today? Good. <laughs> Hunt, you told me there'd be about 25, 30 people here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. This is all for you, Susan. Uh, my name is Pat Malloy. It's my great honor to serve uh, this year as the chairman of the Bellarmine Board of Trustees. Um, I'm thrilled and honored to be here on this. Uh, I sent an email out yesterday to all the trustees and I said my heart was full and it, it is full. It's full about this place and um, uh, full about this time of transition, full about the change that this school's been through and full and excited uh, because of the woman uh, who has agreed to become the next university president of Bellarmine University, Susan M. Donovan. So. <clears throat> Before I let Susan come up and, and talk to you, because this is um, the community that she's chosen to lead and that you've chosen to ask her to come and be the leader of this place, I've got a bunch of thank yous, and so if you'll just bear with me for a few moments. Um, first of all, I want to thank this entire university community. Um, I, I tell folks all the time, I didn't go to school here, and um, I wasn't raised in the Catholic Church, so I have I, learned. I'm, to, I guess I've, I've gotten this Catholic identity by osmosis, uh, but I've been a huge believer for as long as I've participated in this community in the value that this place brings to Louisville. And frankly, at the risk of being a little bit biased, it, uh, it may be the most important institution in this state. Um, to have a... I don't mean that in a parochial way. I don't mean that Bellarmine versus Center, or Bellarmine versus Transy, or Bellarmine versus University of Louisville, but I do believe that a great, free-thinking, academically free place where people can come and learn and grow is the key to the future in a place like Kentucky. The only way that Kentucky grows and moves forward is through education. It's through enlightenment. It's through learning. And... Um, It's what you all are about. So let me start with a few thank yous. Um, two thank yous. Um, I want to thank the fellow who's not here today, uh, the fellow who we lost in two weeks. It'll be uh, the one-year anniversary of his death, and I see lots of friends. I've seen my friend Jerry, who was one of his closest friends, and lots of heads nodding around this uh, auditorium. What Jay McGowan, what he, what he built, and it, he would tell you it wasn't he singular, it was we, what we, the, all of his teammates built over 26 years here is an utterly remarkable place. And so you're being handed this amazing institution, Dr. Donovan, and I know you're grateful, so just, just don't mess it up. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, got, uh, it's got lots of growth left in it. I mean, when Jay found it, he, he filled the air up and on the tires just as well as he could, but it's a pretty well-running in machine right now we want to take it on into the next chapter so I want to thank Jay and, and I know he's in lots of your all's hearts I had the opportunity day before yesterday to call Maureen uh, keep her in your prayers and your thoughts um, my wife is a gym rat and she trains with Maureen two or three days a week and she's beginning to heal but as you all can imagine she's walked a long tough road over this last year and but she sh shared with me her joy, she doesn't know this woman, but her joy that Bellarmine was being handed off to a new leader that will steward this place uh, in the way that she and Jay tried to do for 26 years. I want to thank, I would be remiss if I didn't thank our interim president, uh, Dr. Doris Tegert. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Doris uh, has had virtually every job in this university from teaching to running just about every department and nook and cranny of this university and she, like all of us, was knocked back on her heels when we lost Jay on Tuesday, March 1st, um, but she stepped up and uh, it didn't take the board two days to look at each other and go, we've got to ask Doris to lead this place. I asked her to step up and take that job and she's done it with dignity and grace and the same passion for learning that she's had for 20 plus years at this place. So Dr. Tegger, thank you very, very much. Um, several other folks that I wanna thank. Um, 
we had a long conversation with the faculty the other day, and I won't get off on a long sidebar about all of this, but, and I didn't understand this when, when we lost Jay and we had to set up a search process. The, the, what has become best practice in how you search for a new president is what the experts call a closed process. Doesn't make it right, but it's kind of where the world has gotten to in the way we engineer those processes. And so I'm sure at times the community was frustrated and, and we saw surveys and had conversations and I, I get all of that and appreciate all of that and respect all of that conversation. Um, but I, we, we worked to, to try to build, you're trying to balance a constituent based group on the search committee that will reflect various opinions without it becoming sort of the lowest common denominator House of Representatives, if I can use a bad analogy to Congress. And um, so I've got, we had, sorry, I didn't mean, no I know. I didn't. <laughs> we won't get off on that sidebar either. Um, but we had 12 uh, folks that, that really worked, I mean worked tirelessly on this search committee. We had, um, there were five folks, five individuals who um, were non-trustee people, uh, and I want to call out their names and thank them and tell you sort of the worlds they come from. Matisse Wilbon, who have become, has made, have become a dear friend, of, there she is, hi Matisse, a, a close friend. Great respect, um, professor of sociology here. She was sort of the de facto voice of the, of, the, of the faculty, not the sociology department, the faculty, but she was much more than that. She said one time, she told me in a sidebar, she said, well, some of the faculty members have asked me, well, are they listening to you? And she said, well, if they weren't, I'd have walked out of the search committee. So Matisse's voice was vigorously heard, loudly heard, appropriately heard. And uh, for your service, Matisse, thank you very, very much. Um, Carolyn Tandy, I don't know if Carolyn, did you make it out here? There's Carolyn, hi Carolyn, right back here. We'll probably violate some tax rule here, Carolyn. But Carolyn is the district director for Congressman John Yarmouth. She doesn't have any formal ties to Bellarmine University. She didn't go to Bellarmine University. We just knew her as a serious, thoughtful, outspoken, steady, good judgment member of this community. And so we asked Carolyn to come join us. And a woman with no ties uh, to Bellarmine University spent, I don't know, a few hundred of her hours in pure volunteer time over the last year participating. And again, like Matisse, a voice that when she spoke, she was listened to and heard. So Carolyn, thank you for your service on this. Uh, Lilla Massa McKinley, is she in the room somewhere? Where's Lilla? Oh. Hi, Lily. Lily's on Helen Grace's team, many of you know her, and she represented um, the voice of the staff here. And, and as I said, we, we didn't really wear around constituent labels, but we recruited her from that uh, constituent body. And again, like uh, the other two colleagues I've just mentioned, when she talked, people listened because she's thoughtful, good judgment, and had a good, clear view for what she thought this place needed in the next president. Scott Worthington, are you here? There's Scott, right over here. <clears throat> Scott's a Bellarmine alum. I didn't know him. He's a senior finance officer with um, Passport Managed Care Organization here in town, past president of the Alumni Association, and another person that we asked to come serve and spend hundreds of hours. Doesn't work here, doesn't, not on the payroll at Bellarmine, but gave of his time because he loves this place, and he talked often about uh, the, um, the change it made in his life. Amanda Martin, or is Amanda here? Probably not. Amanda works all the time. She's a school teacher, so I expect she. Oh, I saw a hand go, but it's not Amanda. Amanda is a uh, another one that, that is very interesting. She's uh, young. She's a student, or a fresh graduate rather, was a student. She served, I guess, Ed, with us two years on the board as a student government rep uh, on the board of trustees. And Amanda, not only when she spoke at the meetings. Everybody listened to her, but then she'd send us all an email summarizing her thoughts after all the meeting was over. So she, we got a full encapsulation. We sort of got Amanda live, and then we'd get Amanda in cliff notes. So she was um, great, thoughtful, and I sound like an old man for a 20-something. Good judgment that we listened to and respected. Um, the process couldn't have happened without two co-chairs of the search committee. So those were the five non-trustee members. There were seven trustees because as I explained in a conversation the other day, the trustees, as a matter of law, were charged with the duties of, of actually hiring uh, the next president. And two guys, I don't, Don Berg, are you here in the room? Don, Don's in Montreal this week. Yeah, and Ernest lives in Cincinnati. Don Berg was the former chief financial officer of Brown Foreman. He's a guy that Jay recruited on this board some years ago. No, didn't go to Bellarmine. 
uh, also serves on Augustana. He went to college up uh, near the Tri-Cities up in Iowa, and, um, but cares passionately about what a private university can become and be in Louisville, Kentucky, and in the state of Kentucky. And he's been on the board about as long as I have, nine or 10 years. And uh, he co-chaired the search committee, thoughtful, steady, good judgment, uh, brought to it um, enormous talents. Ernest Marshall is a, is a larger than life character. He's, um, he runs human resources for GE Aviation worldwide. He has this great story. He's a young man, but he was, well, he was a kid when he got a scholarship to play basketball here. And when he was 18 years old, and then he went on through here, and he became the student government president here, and he served on the search committee that brought Jay McGowan to Bellarmine. Mm -hmm. And he served on your search committee. So he's, uh, um, that was interesting. And um, he also it, it talked eloquently during our process about the change that, that uh, Bellarmine had made in his life. There are one, two, three, four, five other trustees who served on the search committee. Sharon Desjardins, who some of you will know, uh, she's an earler from Louisville, and uh, Sharon lives in New York now. Joe Paul Clayton, who some of you will know, who the Clayton Hall here in the, in the field uh, is named for, very generous uh, former technology executive that lives up in Indianapolis now. He served. John Lansing, who runs the Voice of America. He was appointed by President Obama to run the Voice of America worldwide, and he's busy trying to figure out the new politics in Washington, or he would be here today. And um, great guy, he's on our board. Maria Hampton, former head of the Federal Reserve Bank here in Louisville, longtime banker with Liberty Bank and some other banking organizations, served a long time. And I'm not sure Bill Mudd, is Bill in the room? Bill, yeah, he may be traveling. Bill is the president of Churchill Downs, a um, little horse race company you've probably heard of in this town. And, uh, but he's another great Bellarmine alum. He's a kid from a small, county, a small town in Marion, Kentucky that got a scholarship to come here and went to work for GE, and now he's running Churchill Downs worldwide. We had two individuals, Anita Tien, you would never have met her, um, wickedly smart woman who's a consultant with Isaacs and Miller out of Boston, and her associate Leslie McCarthy, they were with the search firm that helped us locate Susan. The, uh, the interesting thing, we had over 200 people applied for the job and we had to winnow it down to 20, and then we actually brought in 11 people, came to Louisville in long interview processes, and, um, and I've said this, I said it in the press, and I'll say it again here publicly, uh, I'm not a guy that wears my religion on my sleeve, but there was a higher power at work in this committee because, um, uh, I'm not saying you're holy, Susan, but I'm just saying there was something at work here because you go through these balloting processes in any one of these sort of search processes, and without fail, by the end of the process, it was a unanimous, and we were, we were, you have to be cautious about it because talented women like Susan and talented men like other individuals that participate in this process, they're wanted by lots of people to come be the president of their university. So it's a competitive process in that sense. And um, we got to the end of, of the conversation, and it was unanimous uh, in the search committee that we seek this woman out and see if we could make her an offer that she would accept. And then when we took it to the Board of Trustees, it was unanimous without any dissent. And Anita and Leslie and Don and Ernest led us through that process, and I'll be eternally grateful. And um, I know Dr. Jay's smiling down on all of us because of the way it worked out. Hunt Helm, who's in the room, Vice President, I don't know your former title, Hunt, but communications and all things public around here. And Lucy Burns, without which, and you'll learn this soon, Susan. This place wouldn't run without Lucy. I mean, Jay knew that, it just wouldn't run. But Hunt and Lucy signed, they signed the confidentiality agreements. They were the only two staff members that signed the confidentiality agreements in addition to the search committee. They weren't in on the search process necessarily, but they helped us move this thing and moving logistically people in and out of Louisville and setting up all the interviews and all the public relations side of it. Hunt and Lucy, thank you all very, very much. So I've talked quite long enough. It's time for me to sit down. I couldn't be um, more thrilled and more humbled to hand uh, Dr. McGowan and Bellarmine and the great work that was built here over the last 26 years off to the fourth president and the first woman president of Bellarmine University, Dr. Susan Donovan.
Thank you, Mr. Malloy, and all of the members of the Board of Trustees. I know they're not here. I also want to thank um, Mr. Berg and Mr. Marshall and the members of the search committee, those that are here and those that are not present. And I want to thank all of you for coming here today. It means a lot to me and my husband, Bill. I also want to thank my husband uh, and my soulmate, Bill Donovan, who supported me to come on this journey and uh, to persuade our twin daughters, Megan and Caitlin, college sophomores, that this move was right for our family. So maybe if we could thank my husband. I know that recently you celebrated homecoming, I guess this last weekend at Bellarmine, and I have to say in my heart and soul that this is my homecoming as well. When I read the mission statement and the presidential profile, it spoke to the core of who I am as a person, what I value, and my passions as well. I'm grateful to Leslie McCarthy and Anita Tian, who Mr. Malloy mentioned, who were the search consultants for understanding Bellarmine and for encouraging me to take a closer look at this inspiring opportunity. I felt a calling from the very beginning of the search. My initial visit to campus, which was incognito, you may have seen me. For those of you who think I look familiar, it's because I was wandering around one day a few weeks ago on my own. And from that initial visit prior to my first interview, it gave me a sense of connection here, and that has grown stronger with each encounter. I'm honored and humbled to serve as the fourth president of Bellarmine University. I met with Dr. Taggart today, and I too express my appreciation for her leadership and grace during this year of transition. Like Dr. Taggart, I stand proudly on the shoulders of Dr. Jay McGowan, a legend at Bellarmine and in higher education. I have been awestruck by the vision that he brought to this wonderful institution, and I consider it a privilege to build upon that vision in moving this institution forward to even greater prominence and impact in the local, regional, and global society. While I've read much about you and your accomplishments, I look forward to learning and interacting much more in the coming months as I prepare and as I prepare for and assume the presidency. We will have time for questions individually after and conversation after the program. But with open arms and an open mind, I encourage your feedback to my remarks and your active participation in the everyday governance of this university. Since its founding in 1950, Bellarmine was radical or revolutionary as one of the first private institutions in Kentucky to be open to all races. This community sees discourse, activism, and global understanding not as threats, but as virtues that shape the character of this independent Catholic institution. The mission statement in 1950 was clear, and I will quote, students must be taught to evaluate this society and to exercise their trained human powers to change it whenever necessary. I understand that our students continue to speak out against injustice as recently as if within the last few weeks, and I applaud their right and their responsibility to do so. Our mission calls upon all of us to use our talents, to teach in hopes of greater understanding and compassion, to use our research to create and share knowledge that will lift children out of poverty, to improve the condition of public health, to protect and to preserve our environment, to provide economic solutions to urban problems, and to bring empathy and vibrancy into our school systems. We will not back away from our responsibility to our neighbors or our city. We will provide an anchor in the storm of indifference and a beacon of light for the downtrodden to help them find their way. 
this University on the Hill will continue to serve as a community of teachers and learners who understand that the liberal arts, professional and graduate education are keys that open the doors for every person with a Bellarmine education. While I have been so impressed with the fluid and active engagement of your representatives on the Presidential Search Committee, I think it's worth speaking specifically and directly to some of your vocations at the institution and my hope for our level of engagement and interaction going forward. To the faculty, I recognize the significance of your work and the distinction that you bring to Bellarmine. While I co-taught several first-year experience courses, I hope in, in the future I will have the opportunity to teach in the higher ed degree program here. I have great respect for the teaching, scholarship, and service that you commit to every day and over the course of your lives. The academic reputation of Bellarmine is a credit to your life's work. To the professionals in student affairs, campus ministry, community service, athletics, identity and inclusion, and so many other educators here with co-curricular efforts, I have great respect for your contributions to our mission to educate the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. I consider your profession to be a noble one and critical to our mission. You are educators in every sense of the word. And to the staff, I know that you too have chosen to commit your life, your life's work to Bellarmine and our students. You welcome students through our, your hospitality and your life's experience. You make students smile and you know when they are having a bad day. You create a sense of humor a sense of home. You take great pride in having beautiful facilities and grounds, a safe environment, and providing administrative support to the entire community. You are providing the foundation of Cura Personalis to every person who steps on this lovely campus. And to the students, you are the reason that Bellarmine exists. You have embraced our mission, and we hope it inspires you throughout your lifetime. I have witnessed this inspiration among your alumni and trustees. Whether this be your undergraduate, professional, or graduate education, you have rights and responsibilities that we hope will endear you to Bellarmine for the rest of your lives. There is a balance of challenge and support that we aim to sustain that will promote your growth and achievement. We are committed to your success and inspired by your good works. The education that Bellarmine provides is needed now more than ever. All of us have witnessed great division in this, in this past year during the national election, on college and university campuses, in city streets across the nation, and in almost every corner of our everyday lives. The university, this university embraces inclusion educates students in the Merton tradition to find the interconnectedness of all life and the solidarity of the human spirit which transcends ethnic, religious, and social divisions. The mission of Bellarmine beckons us to unite to solve problems, to rectify injustices, to advocate for and to learn from the needy in our midst to provide access to education that transforms lives in the city of Louisville, in the region, and in society at large. This only happens, though, if we are willing to be transformed as well. While our tasks are not small and our challenges loom large, I pledge to you that we, as a university committed to finding good in all people, will continue to aspire to the highest level of excellence in the search of truth. We are an independent Catholic institution founded on the principles of justice, embracing all faiths, and transforming compassionate leaders who will change the world. There is nothing more important or noble than that, and I am honored and grateful to be a member of this community 
and to lead and serve this great institution, Bellarmine University. Thank you. Hunt says we're adjourned, so she's going to stay and converse and answer questions. And I think there's, I saw some food around here earlier somewhere. So thank you all for being out here today. Thank you very much.